this is the small 12 volt solar power system for the off-grid cabin. It's really quite simple. Uh, you've got the batteries coming up here, positive side of the battery into the switch, the negative into the bus bar. From the breaker, positive, goes to this fuse and into the inverter and into the 12 volt breaker panel and the negative goes from the bus bar to the inverter and to the 12 volt breaker panel. This is the solar panels. Power goes in to the charge controller, through the charge controller, down, positive side, through the breaker, down through the switch and into the batteries. And the same for the negative, which goes through the negative line through the inverter, through the bus bar, and down to the battery. Now that's pretty simple. This is a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And I just got some lights and a small water pump. That's it. This is pretty much uh, every component that you need. Charge controller. This is a pulse width modulation uh, chip. It works. An inverter, 600 watts, 12 volts. Uh, switch for the battery. Uh, uh, bus bar for the negative. Uh, circuit breaker battery, and cables, some more cables, There we go. Inverter, charge controller, mounted. Next, you probably want a switch for your battery. So you can turn everything off uh, in case you need to do anything with your system. Whatever. Okay, so I was thinking uh, my negative bus bar right here and my battery switch. realized I can't mount this yet. Because we have to make this wiring first. Okay, so I've uh, attached the positive cable from the switch. And I'm going to attach it to the inverter positive and from the inverter positive to the charge controller. And from the switch to the circuit breaker, I'm going to make a new cable here. I've got some lugs, I'm going to crimp them with this. It's really simple. You can get it at any hardware store, I guess. So, yeah, let's do it. Pretty good connection right there. Cold welded. Yeah. So we should use this uh, heat shrink. What I've got right now is electrical tape, so probably work. There we go. And 
important note, uh, tighten every connection as good as you can. Loose connections can cause heat, which can cause melting or wire insulation, fire. Be careful. There you go, this is my positive line, right there. Breaker, switch, inverter, charge controller. Now, let's do the negative. There we go. Simple, right? All you have to do is get yourself a solar panel. This is a 50 watt solar panel. Of course, you can make it as big as you want, according to the charge controller, of course. Yeah. Let's test it out. We need a battery. This is a small battery. We've got power. Charge controller says 13 volts. Nice, right? And the inverter is on. Let's see if we can power something. Let's see if I can charge my power tools. There you go. So there we have it. Simple way to build your own backup DIY 12 volt cabin RV camper van solar setup. Of course, I would recommend switching the PDM charge controller to MPPT. Inverter with a pure sine wave inverter. This is a modified sine wave. It's kind of dirty and electricity feel. It works. If you're in a pinch, go for it. It works. And it's cheap. It's cheap. I don't think you can get any cheaper than this. So I'm in the process of building a 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. Eight cells here wired in parallel to top balance them. And we're charging them up to 3.6. We're going to connect a uh, DALI BMS, configuring them in a 4S 2P configuration. And the cells are from AliExpress. They are uh, Lito Kala. 30 amp hour cells. We are going to hopefully get a 60 amp hour battery out of them. Let's just hope they work. Top balancing finished and battery is assembled. Four cells in series, two in parallel. EMS is connected with the first cell negative, first cell positive, second cell positive, third cell positive, fourth cell positive, and this is the main positive for the battery. This is the main negative. This is supposed to be a 60 amp hour 12.8 volt battery we are going to test it with a capacity tester all right so we hooked up the capacity tester 
We are drawing 120 watts of power, 9.2 amps. Let's just let it run. Let's see how many amp hours we get. Supposedly, 60 amp hours. 16 minutes in, uh, into the test, uh, I cranked it up to 11 amps. 11 amps. That's what it's outputting. We are 2 hours and 26 minutes into the test. And, uh, while the test uh, has been running, I made a uh, box for the battery. With some insulation in the bottom, and on the sides and ends. Got some sheeting from an EV uh, battery effect, which I'm going to use between the cells. And a plastic sheeting that's going behind the BMS. Just for my own peace of mind, the, these cells are clearly resleeved. So, most likely grade B cells, and <laughs> the edges could get exposed to each other causing an internal resistance error. I do my best to avoid that. But first, we have to see if the battery is in fact a 60 amp hour battery. So the test is finished and we've got 47.36 amp hours. That's not good. Looks like I've been ripped off. These are most likely 25 amp hour cells. Resleeved. And sold as 30 amp hours. I will finish the bit. Put the insulation on and Put the battery in the box. Charge the battery up 100%. And do another test. Most likely we can call this a 50 amp hour battery. So finished with the insulation sheets in between each cell and behind the BMS. So thermal plastic sheeting. Now let's put it in the box. Got the battery inside the box. Let's put the lid on. That's the final product. DIY lithium ion phosphate battery with an enclosure. Negative, positive. We should put some labeling on it. Yeah, so the first test showed 47 amp hours. So we're gonna charge it up and do another test. So I just saw that the Dali BMS uh, got the power at 11.5 volts, which is 2.8 per cell. Uh, so we did have a little bit more to go on. I could go as low as 10 volts on a capacity test, I guess. So I think we're probably probably above 50 amp hours. Anyway, so that's. A good thing. Now we're charging it up and getting ready for another test. So we charged up the battery 14.67 is the resting voltage and we 
are ready to do another test. Let's see if we can beat the 47 amp hours. Okay, so let's zero the tester out. There we go. I think we're gonna do a 10 amp test. The final test is completed and I'm recharging the battery. We are at 47 amp hours. So that's what I got. I guess it's the Dolly BMS cutting power at a slightly higher, higher voltage and, and it's also stopping the charging at a slightly lower voltage I guess th that's fine it's not a smart B BMS so I can't adjust the parameters or anything it's what I got